Hey folks, Quilly King here and welcome to episode two of our absolutely unmodded with no expansions, totally vanilla run of RimWorld. It is our let's play slash tutorial uh, that we've got going on here. Trying to keep up a good pace so we get enough gameplay while also trying to explain everything to someone who might be brand new to RimWorld and is looking for some instructions on how to play. Uh, I mean, there are some great just standalone tutorial type things out there that explore particular mechanics in depth. Here we're going to try to do a learn as we play kind of vibe. So Vort is still doing things that they're not, we, we're we not really necessarily gonna want them as long-term miner. Oh, maybe we do, I don't know. You know what, maybe it's totally fine, but we're keeping Vort with busy with some mining work later on. That's not necessarily their long-term expertise, but it's gonna be okay. We've gotten through our first day. We slept, not, ne well, it's sort of in the great outdoors. We didn't have a roof over our head yet. For tonight, um, we nearly will. Sky is still, while well, Sky's chopping down trees, Phoebe is doing construction, although currently going on a walk because their recreation need was low. So they are going on a walk to try to just, you know, relax, take it easy, have a little bit of fun, and go ahead and do that. So we'll let Phoebe continue to walk around here. Now, once we get this finish, once we get our wall is complete and we get a roof over here, we will then have the ability to move this stuff that's currently decaying because it's out of doors inside and to do that we're going to set up a stockpile so we've got under zone we can have a stockpile zone over here and we will be placing things in that zone what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make this little back room here into a stockpile this is not going to be very big but it'll look kind of nice oh there we go phoebe finish their walk coming over here constructing since there's walls all the way around um there's a door here it's just open because there's a rock in the way um because there's fully walled off and again diagonals this connection here counts as a solid wall so technically, we don't even need this wall bit at all. I could cancel this. This will be just as functional and actually gives us a little bit more space. I didn't even need the four corners in this house over here. I could have left these corners off and everything would have been enclosed. We would have saved time and material. But I think it looks dumb. So I'm going to do that because aesthetics matter. Darn it. There's a lot of things in RimWorld that are sometimes an, um, an what's some, like a balancing act between sort of fun and aesthetics and enjoying that versus efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. Uh, and it's just one of those things are always, you know, what, where your personal balance is going to be is going to determine it. You know, this is just a big square building. It's not particularly exciting, but so at least what we can do is have some nice clean corners going on. Maybe we'll try to be a little bit more in interesting with our construction uh, later on down the road. You can see Phoebe is moving some stones out of the way here so that she can continue the construction. Now, all these stones, they're not very pretty. If I take a look at this limestone chunks, so I select it. If I hit I over here, you see this limestone chunk is a beauty of minus eight. These rocks are ugly. I mean, who wants to sleep in a room full with a bunch of rocks? It's terrible. In fact, if we click on this bed over here, we can see some stats about this room. This barracks, a barrack is a room with multiple beds in it, is awful. Awful, awful, awful. And a big part of it is because it's dirty and it's hideous. It has very poor beauty. Now, the dirt is mostly because it's literally a dirt floor, and the lack of beauty is going to be mostly based on the fact that there's all these stone chunks in here. We should get them out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my zones over here. I'm going to make a dumping stockpile, and I'm just going to put it over here for now. Now, stockpiles, this is a stockpile. This is a dumping stockpile. They are actually exactly the same thing. Both of these have storage rules that you can set. Literally, the only thing that, that is different between these is A, what their, their name is by default, and B, uh, you can rename these, right? I can, I can call this whatever. I can call it, like, blah. There you go. Now it's not a dumping stockpile. It's a blah. The difference is between the stockpile tool and the dumping stockpile tool is just what is allowed to be stored there by default. This dumping stockpile has everything turned off except for chunks and corpses. Only chunks and corpses can be stored here by default. Whereas if we look at our stockpile, everything can be stored here except chunks and corpses and also uprooted plants, which we don't have to talk about. We can just ignore that for now. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. So the dumping stockpile is your garbage pile. Now we, so right now, everything that's not a stone chunk or a corpse will get stored in our stockpile over here. So that's what the hauling job is for people. If they get around to doing the hauling job, what's going to happen is they're going to grab, say, the survival meal and put it in the stockpile. Now, we know that silver and steel don't they don't um, decompose outdoors. 
So we actually don't need to put those things indoors. Now, I may want to store my silver indoors because it's valuable. This is our trade currency. But our steel really doesn't have to be kept inside. So let's say I go to this dumping stockpile and I search for steel. There you go. Raw resources, steel, or plastic, steel, and steel. Well, in my dumping stockpile, I'm going to allow steel to be stored over here. And in my indoor stockpile, I'm going to not allow steel. So these steel chunks won't get stored inside the house because they don't need to be. And that'll save us more room in our stockpile because honestly, space is kind of tight. Now, someone's going to go and eventually haul this in by itself. Let's say I go, I'm going to turn on hauling here for Phoebe and Sky. I'm going to go and put it at a one. So they're going to do this as a top priority. And I just want to show what they'll do. And we can see it happening already. Sky and Phoebe, they're going to grab things and they're going to store things in here. Um, and be these stones here th that were in this stockpile and don't belong here, they're also getting carried out. Now, what we'll quickly see is the rest of the stone chunks that are sitting around are not going to get carried every anywhere. And we'll see why that is. Let me fast forward. So most things do get carried automatically. These chunks do not. And the reason for this is, I think, because there's chunks all over the map. If I go here, there's tons of chunks and we don't necessarily want our people to go all the way across the map and just constantly pick up these chunks and bring them there. So chunks have to actually be explicitly told to be hauled with this button here. So all the chunks that are in my house, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a haul command and then someone will come and grab that rock and put it in the dumping stockpile. You can also double click. What this does is it selects everything in the same type on your screen, not on the map, right? Let's compare a uh, bad example. Maybe there we go right here. It's everything on the screen, but not everything on the map where if I zoom in, double click, you see, it didn't select those rocks. I'm going to want all these out of the way. Haul all those. Haul all these, please. There we go. Let's let's get these out of my house. We're going to go ahead and do that. So that'll clear everything out of this building and get that done. Now, Phoebe, honestly, I really would like her to keep doing construction because we're not quite done building this house. Um, and with Sky, actually, I'm going to bring the haul down to a three because if Sky doesn't have any hunting to do and we haven't said uh, we haven't flagged anything to be hunted, so that's not going to happen. And we have no prisoners. If she doesn't have anything to grow or chop down, which currently she doesn't, Phoebe is now going to be hauling. Phoebe is already hauling without me doing a priority because it's just gone down that list. Oh, she got hungry, so she's going to need a survival meal. Again, she's going to be unhappy that she ate without a table. Night is coming. There's going to be going to sleep soon. And I think Phoebe, who's... Oh, sorry. That's... Yeah. Where's Sky? Sky's going for a walk for a little bit of fun. Phoebe is going to finish working on that wall. And then it's going to start roofing things up. Or go to bed. I'm actually going to flag this tree here to be cut. By default... Oh, there, actually, there are more trees to be cut down. So, actually, Sky will be doing that. By default, when you chop wood, it only chops down trees that are mature enough to give you wood, which I believe is the 50% growth mark. Um, or maybe not. This tree is going to get cut down. It's only 46% grown. But you see this one here is not flagged to be chopped because it's not grown enough to give us any wood. So if we go chop tree, it doesn't chop that one down by default. You can use cut plant. This will cut everything, including grass. That's not what we're looking for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the click on this and say cut plant over here because I'd much rather Sky, who's better with trees to cut this down. She'll be faster because otherwise Phoebe, our constructor, is going to try to tr cut that down when Phoebe is going to try to put down the roof and Phoebe's not very quick at it. I'm going to cancel the rest of these trees over here because I think we've got plenty of wood ready to go. So, yeah, nighttime is coming. I do have in our schedule at 2200 hours. That's 10 p.m. People are going to go to sleep. They will finish whatever they're currently doing. So Vort's going to go and chop this last, yeah, mine this last tile over here and then going to go to sleep. So we'll get that going on. Sky's going to come to bed. Excellent. There we go. And they're going to have a snooze. So, I mean, they're still not keen on their barracks, right? Because it's it's not a great spot. Yeah, unsightly environment. I think when they wake up, they'll get a mood. There we go. Awful barracks. And it is awful. And yeah, it lasts all day. So hopefully we can improve that. Moving the rock out of here will help. But if we floor this area, it'll help as well because it will add to some beauty and dramatically reduce the dirtiness of this room, which is going to be helpful. Let's see, we've got a little warning here. We would like more um, recreational variety. Right now, the only thing they can do to have fun is chit chat with each other and go for walks. That's not terribly exciting. So we would like and what happens is if people have recently done a particular recreation activity, they won't get as much out of it for the next little while. These pawns want variety in our architect menu. We do have a recreation category and we've got a few things we can build for them. I really like getting a horseshoe pin as early as possible. So the horseshoe pin will provide a dexterity play 
um, recreation type. You can see on this mouse over, you can see the list of all the recreation types. So they can do solitary relaxation right now. They can do social interaction right now, but that is it. Um, food consumption can give them a positive buff if it's like tasty food. But yeah, right now they have no way to get dexterity play or cerebral play. So let's get them a dexterity play. We'll put down a horseshoe pin. Here, we'll put it down uh, right over here. Boop. So Phoebe at some point will go and construct that. In fact, I'm going to encourage Phoebe to do that now. Since Phoebe is not the expert at chopping down trees, I'm going to wake up Sky and get her to go and cut down this oak tree. So Phoebe is going to go do that. By the way, we can rename people as well. So in the bio for Phoebe, so this person's name is Phoebe Dafo, with their nickname being Phoebe. We can change their nickname and their title right away, because right now she's known as a test subject. So we can call her, um, how about we go Fob the Builder. Fob the Builder. So this is no longer Phoebe, it's now Fob. And her custom title is Builder. So Fob the Builder. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, we could rename people and think. Um, for a long time, we could not rename animals in vanilla, but now we can. Yeah, if you click on training here, we could rename this Yorkie who's eating some of our prepared meals. I mean, that's not really the ideal, but what can we do about it right now? Not much. Kiwi is really, other than the fact that Kiwi keeps Sky happy, Kiwi serves no purpose in the colony. It's cold reality, but the rim, that's the way it goes sometimes. All right, we're going to do that. We'll have to get a table soon. So Phoebe's building the roof over here. We're going to let Phoebe finish, or Fob, I should say. We'll let Fob finish the uh, the roof. Um, oh, also, you can see Fob is now wearing a helmet. So we did start the game with a little bit of clothing. We've got flak vest, flak pants, and a helmet over here. Um, they will automatically equip clothes that meet certain criteria. We can talk about later on. Um, as long as it's in a stockpile. So they don't recognize this as clothes we own right now. And they didn't recognize the helmet as clothes we own. So they weren't, they didn't auto equip it. But at some point, the helmet was almost certainly hauled into here. And then someone said, hey, I should protect my noggin. So Fob went ahead and did that. We can change people's uh, attire in a variety of ways. First of all, I could tell Sky, listen, Sky, go ahead and I'm going to force you to equip this flak vest. I can also force you to haul it. So if I do force equip, Sky's going to go and she'll put this vest on. That's regardless of anything else. She has now been forced to wear this vest, which is in her best interest, really. And if we check her gear tab, we can now see that she's got a flak vest here and it's it says forced. Uh, so Phoebe, or sorry, Sky will not take off this flak vest now. I can tell her to drop it, which I will do. So she's gonna take off the flak vest, put it on the ground. It does get marked as forbidden if you force someone to drop it. I'm going to go ahead and allow that. That's going to be okay. What I'm going to do now is with the fob, I'm going to tell you to haul this vest, please. I'm going to shift click on the pants and tell you to haul those as well. So they're going to get put in the stockpile. And at some point, someone's going to be like, hey, an armored vest. That sounds like a great idea. I'm going to put that on. But I'm not going to have forced them to do it. You can also control their outfits with this current outfit over here. Right now, these people are allowed to wear anything. There's these little pre mains that we can use for different um, outfit designs. We can also edit and specifically uh, say, listen, you're not allowed to wear T-shirts. No T-shirts allowed over here. I don't want to see any bare arms. But right now, just setting this to anything is going to be perfectly OK. No reason to do otherwise uh, at the current time. But you might want to have specialized outfits or things later on if you've got particular plans. Maybe you want everyone to have a certain theme. That's entirely possible. So FOB has no construction to do right now. Because they're not, they're not constructing, and there's nothing to craft, so they're just on hauling duty over here. So they're just hauling the rest of it because they're out of work. They've made uh, the horseshoe pin, which Vort is playing with. Great stuff. Let's put a little bit more work in here. Let's try to... Um, well, actually, I might want Fob to prioritize hauling these chunks, but they'll, they'll get around to it at some point. You make that bedroom prettier. The other thing we can do, and this is not terribly important right now, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to put down some flooring. And right now... Um, I can do concrete with steel. It's not very pretty, but it works. Paved tiles is neutral in terms of look. It's neither pretty nor ugly, so you could use that. Or you can use wood floors. I I really personally love the look of wood floors. They are flammable, though, so they're really not the ideal for long term. But I love the wooden floors. So we're going to get Phoebe to come in over here. They, will, they, they are finishing their hauling job, which is great. But at some point, they'll come and just build this wooden floor. And that will make this barracks a lot nicer. The wooden floors are better than the bare floor, plus it'll keep it a little bit cleaner. Although we're still going to need to get the rock chunks out of there at some point uh, to really make it practical. Uh, Vort, 
you're digging a compact of steel. Yeah, I flagged a bunch more little mining job to keep Vort busy for now because we don't have anything else going on. But we would like to get some crafting stations down pretty soon. Ba -ba -bum. We're, right now, we're still okay. Well, we only have 13 more meals. We actually do have to get the food situation resolved ASAP. Okay, let's work on that. So we know we're not going to get these these this rice for a while. Um, we're going to need to supplement our diet with some some meat. It's just what the situation it's going to be. Uh, so to do that, we're going to need a couple of things. First, certainly, we are going to need a butcher's table so we can butcher the meat. But then we're going to have to cook the raw meat if we're going to do anything with it. And unfortunately, we don't have a particularly competent cook. So what we're going to need instead is we're going to use this nutrient paste dispenser. Although we do need a cook construction skill of five, um, Sky can do it. Or if fob levels up, because they were currently at a four, but they're probably close to getting to five. My mouse over construction, they're getting there. But I'll probably just turn on Sky's construction for a little bit so she can build the nutrient paste dispenser. What this does, you can put any raw food into a hopper next to this, and it will give you a nutrient paste meal. It is not very tasty. It actually gives your, your population negative thoughts, because that's not... It's not good food. It's not tasty food, but at least they won't die. And that's important. Pro tip, try not to die. Um, but this does need electricity. So we're gonna have to set up some, some power and things for all that. I'm also going to set up a little kind of a freezer area. We'll explain why that is later, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so, hmm. You know what? I'm just gonna build a separate room to showcase some stuff. That's what I'm gonna do. Let's build. So I'm going to plan on, mm, you know what? I want people to get up and then eat. I mean, they're going to have individual bedrooms. Maybe this should be a little dining hall. Okay, that's fine. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this uh, dumping stockpile. I'm just going to expand it. Make it big over here. And then I'm going to take the shrink. I'm just going to shrink it out of this area. And yeah, we'll have to uh, move these stone out of here. And yeah, the, uh, the steel will get moved over as well. I'm going to set up a new construction job. Like so. I'm also going to do some deconstruction over here. Mm, I want to leave one of these. This will make sense in a little bit. I promise. There you go. A little bit of floor. We're still botching some stuff. Fob's still working on getting their, uh, their construction skill up a little bit higher. But hey, they're practicing. So now this room here is still awful. But it's getting a lot better. And it'll be a lot better once we get these stone chunks out of here as well. Actually, Fob, I'm going to save you a lot of walking. I'm going to tell you to deconstruct this wall. There you go. So now there's a little opening over here that you can poke through. Yeah, you're having another one of those. Oh, you got to get rid of that tree. Do, 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 do. Oh, we have a visitor. A digger from the colony is visiting. This person may have a few things to trade. We could also... If I took one of my people... Um, and if I, um, so yeah, Sky could trade, if I recruited them, if I hit draft, I could right click on this people and try to arrest them as well. We could set up a little prison and try to capture this person. It wouldn't make us friends with their faction, the Doar Kin League, but it would give us another person. Eh, you know, not too bad off, underground or cannibal. They got some great skill. I don't think we're in a position where we want to just kidnap someone right away, but it's an option. There's a lot of ways we can get some extra colonists. Kidnapping is one of them. Oh, there's gold in them there hills. Interesting. Okay. All right. So this area over here, what I'm going to do is actually, you know what? I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go and clear this area as well. Excellent. So I'm going to put in this nutrient paste dispenser, and I'm going to position it here, and I'll explain why I'm positioning it here uh, later. We're going to do that. Now, we know Fob doesn't have the skill for it. Again, we could unlock it for Sky, but we also know we need power for this. Plus, we're going to want some lights inside the house. So we know we need some power. We've got a button here. At the start of the game, we've got a few options. We can do a wood fire generator, so we burn wood for power. We can burn chem fuel. Mm, chem fuel is a thing later on. We can also build a wind turbine. Um, the wind turbine's power generation is going to fluctuate depending on how windy it is, but it doesn't require us to constantly burn wood. So we might want an early wood fire generator, but I'm a big fan of trying to get the wind turbine up and running as soon as possible. Now, the area around here, these white boxes, these are areas where if there's something tall in that area, it will block the wind and make your wind turbine work less well. So walls, 
like this, this would block the wind. Mountainside like this, yep. Also trees will block windy areas. So if I put it, um, oh yeah, here there's a, there's a little space occupied because of our little um, horseshoe pin. If I put it here, there is one tree in the way, but we could cut it down. We will have to worry about continuously cutting down, which can be kind of annoying. One of the things I quite like to do is if we did something like this, we could have another growing area. Seven by ten will cover the front area like that. And if I expand it, I think like this. Yeah, there we go. Places where you're growing crops, th there will be no trees. Your people will automatically cut down those trees to make space for the crops. The other thing is if there's something in that tile, their trees won't grow. So our dumping stockpile, if we made this a dumping stockpile and filled it with rocks, we'd have to cut down these trees first, but then if we put rocks all over that, then no trees would grow there. Those are a couple of different ways you can prevent your wind turbines from being blocked regularly. I'm gonna do this and yeah, we'll set up another crop growing area. So we've got the rice over here for a quick crop turnaround. I'll actually have this be a potato crop. And then once the potatoes come in, I'll probably change this rice area to something else. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And the other thing I'm gonna do is make sure we've got a power conduit that is gonna run from this wind turbine into our building. I like to build it in the wall so you don't see them. Now. For power devices, like the wind turbines or batteries later on, they actually do have to touch the conduit. But other things, they can they can connect to it, I think, within six tiles. So we don't actually have to touch the nutrient paste dispenser for it to have power from this power line. It will connect over there. So let's let this happen. So Vort's still doing some digging. That's fine. Sky is going to be chopping down these trees and getting ready to do some planting. And then Fob, well, Fob is going for a walk, but we could actually force him and say, listen, get started on this... Uh, wind turbine right away and start doing some of this construction please if you can the fact that fob skill still isn't great and she's still botching some things is kind of annoying because wasting more and more material but we're gonna have to do it and yeah it would be nice if fob could get to level five construction so that she could build the nutrient paste dispenser but again we can use sky to do it because she did come in with a skill of six if we didn't have the nutrient paste dispenser then we'd have to do some cooking which would be a bit annoying because our cooks are terrible uh, but normally I like cooking. We can either do a fueled stove, which burns wood to cook, which would be great if we don't have power, or we can do an electric stove. The other thing you can do is put down a campfire, which is under temperature. You can build a campfire, and you can do some cooking there as well to get started. Now, cooking takes time, but um, unlike nutrient paste meals, which upset your people, uh, simple meals do not give a debuff, and in fact, if you can make fine or even lavish meals, they give a positive mood buff to your pawns and keeps them happier. So, we'll see what we can do here. You know what, Kiwi? I'm tired of you sleeping just anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and give you a... I think it's under, under furniture? We can do an animal sleep spot. I think... Yeah, Kiwi is small enough they could actually sleep in a sleeping box, which does take wood, but it's kind of nice. Or can just give them a designated spot on the ground for their sleep spot. Um, tell you what, in the interest of saving wood, I'm just going to put down a little sleep spot. Next time Kiwi goes to sleep, she's going to claim this little sleep spot in the corner of the room, sleep with her people, which I think is cute. Also, if an animal gets hurt, um, it's these sleep spots that go to for, for medical help. You can even flag a sleep spot as a specific medical spot to get help. All right, Fob's going to go and set up this wind turbine. Now, right now, if we click on it, the wind turbine is blocked by a poplar tree. Probably that one right there. Sky's going to get around to chopping that down. Oh, there's another poplar tree over here. So we had a couple. Sky's going to get around to chopping those down as she handles the uh, the rest of the growth here. But it looks like we are... Oh, she's re the rice over here because it's expanded. That's right. And then there's more trees to cut down. So she's going to work on that. She'll get around to it. I can still hear the mining. Tap, tap, tap with Vort over here. Excellent. Now we're gonna get attacked relatively soon. We got a note here that we might need some defense. Um, I'm gonna go, the first attack is actually pretty insignificant, but if you're worried about it, we're gonna set up a little bit of a barricade. Sandbags and barricades are basically the same. Sandbags need cloth. Barricades can be made out of just regular material. They're slightly different, but basically the same. I'm gonna make a little tiny sort of like bunker type thing right over here so we can take some cover behind it. It's really not going to be necessary for the first raid, but I'll set up a little bit of that. Fob's going to want some more work to do relatively soon because he's hauling the, or she's hauling the holly, the granite chunk to Blah, which is the dumping stockpile, what we renamed it, if you remember. 
but we'll then now go work on the barricades. And then as soon as this is done, which won't take long, Fob will go back to just doing some hauling because there's not going to be any more construction tasks. There is this job, but Fob does not have enough construction skill for it. Actually, I will set up a little bit more construction for you because people are still cranky that they're eating without a table. So I'm going to make a little one by two table out of wood here. I'm going to put it uh, just in the corner of the room there. Uh, well, actually, not there. I'm going to put it near the nutrient paste dispenser. I'm going to put it... Uh, I'm going to put it here. I think that placement will make a little bit more sense when I do the next stage of our plan. I'll give it a couple of chairs. Uh, I mean, we got three people, but it's very unlikely that everyone will be eating at the same time. So I think two chairs is going to be fine. We have a group of travelers just passing by for a visit. Hey, nice to have you around. Uh, that's going to be okay. There we go. What kind of a table? Normal table. Yeah, I don't think Fob's... I mean, Fob might get lucky and make something that's good quality. Probably no better than good, though. How's this chair? Oh, poor chair. Womp womp. <gasps> okay. Now, Fob did just go and eat a meal over there, so they won't get the 8 without a table debuff, but we've got our first problem. A rat has gone mad and is going to try to attack everyone that it sees. So we've got a mad rat right over here by these uh, by these boars. So if I unpause, this rat's going to be heading towards, well, heading towards these people. It's trying to attack the closest people. And it would be unfortunate if her visitors were hurt. So I'm going to grab all three of my people. You can you can click and drag to select people in the map. You can also click and drag, and you can select them up over here. I'm going to draft them. The hotkey for that is R. And I'm going to tell them to set up over here. I'm going to set up near a group of visitors and try to protect them from this mad rat, which is this one right over here. When your people are drafted, they will automatically attack anyone that comes within range. There's that rat. So Vort's going to be in position. Vort has a knife. Now, they won't move positions. So your meleeers won't run towards enemies by default. So your range people, which actually I'm going to reposition a little further back here. Your range people will start shooting. As long as fire at will is turned on, they will start shooting at enemies. And you can see it happening there. Oh, wow. I think that was Fob that shot the rat. Sometimes it takes more. Your melee people, you can right click on a target and they will go and attack them. I and mean, if anyone comes up to them, then they will attack. Your range people won't be able to shoot at someone who's attacking them in melee. They will just try to punch them back. But yeah, I can go ahead and unrecruit everyone. And I'm going to unforbid this rat. If we get a butcher table, we can butcher the rat and have some meat to put in our nutrient paste dispenser. Well, we're talking about it. Let's go and do it. Hell, Fob needs some things to do. So I'm going to put a butcher table. Or now, I will put it inside the room, but we're going to have to talk about some things in a little bit. So Fob's going to go and finish this chair, then they'll build the butcher table. It'd be great if their skill got up to... Oh! They do have a construction of five! So now they have enough to finish to build the nutrient paste dispenser. How lovely. I should get some lights in the room, too. We've got a little bit of power. Let's go and get a couple of standing lamps. Maybe just one standing lamp for now. I'm going to put it right there. Actually, Fob, I'm going to get you to build that first, because you'll do everything a little bit better if you have some light in the area. There we go. Just takes a second for the light to connect. Now we got a little bit of light because people move and work slower if there's no light. And again, if they spend time in the darkness, if they're in the darkness, they get a negative mood lit over here. Oops, left in the cold. It's 23 during the day, but I guess it got cool enough at night. I think if it goes below maybe 16 degrees at night, they're unhappy about that. So we might need to look into some heaters or something. We shall see. But there you go. Fob's going to make the other chair. Oh, botch while making the nutrient paste dispenser. That's unfortunate because it might have cost us components. Nutrient paste dispenser is up. Excellent. Now we get a message here. We need a food hopper. The food, the nutrient paste dispenser can't do anything if it's not supplied with food. So what we want to do is we want to go and put a hopper in here. And we connect it up to the nutrient paste dispenser thusly. So Fob, I will go and tell you to do this right away, please. Nutrient paste dispenser has the same storage button as our stockpile. So our stockpile here, you remember, we had this one in the dumping stockpile with the storage button that lets us control what goes there. The same thing happens with the nutrient paste dispenser. And what we want to do is put things in here that can be turned into nutrient paste. The default allocation is pretty good. It allows all vegetarian products, all animal products, that's milk and eggs, as well as all meat products except for human meat and insect meat, which makes people unhappy if they eat it. By default, if you're running certain ideologies or if you have cannibals in your group, then things might be a little bit different. But the default allocation is pretty good. The other thing is this hopper, the priority set is by default set to important. Our normal stockpiles here are set to normal priority, both of these. That means if something can be stored in a hopper, 
it will be stored in a hopper before it gets stored in a regular stockpile. So basically, if we end up with raw meat, raw vegetables, they'll get put in the hopper first, which is great because then people can use it to get nutrient paste meals. Fob is going to go and make the butcher table here. There we go. So now we have a butcher table. Now, a butcher table is the first structure we've built that requires a bill assigned to it. This is a job. By default, nothing happens to the butcher table. We have to put in an order and say, listen, someone go and butcher a creature. So this is going to make one time job to go and butcher something on the map. Now, this is a cooking job. If I click details, um, actually, I don't know if it lists. Oh, yeah. Cooking skill is what gets used for this. There's no particular skill requirement to do butchering. Someone who has the butcher, the cooking job turned on will go and grab some animal corpse somewhere and butcher it. We know there's a dead rat over there, so it's possible to do, but we have no one set to cooking. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go, I'm going to tell everyone, anyone who's got a moment to spare, go and, uh, uh, and butcher. Fob is currently doing a hauling job. They're hauling the corpse of this to this stockpile. We'll let them finish that, but then after Fob does this, someone should go and decide to cook the rat. Someone who's in between jobs. Huh? No one did it immediately. That's interesting. Let me reset Fob. There we go. I don't think they reevaluated the rat right away. I just, what I did is I just recruited and unrecruited Fob immediately. So they reevaluated the jobs and they're like, hey, I can butcher a rat. So Fob's gonna bring it over here and butcher this rat for us. Not gonna get a lot of meat and fur out of this, but it's gonna happen. There we go. So Fob is now carrying 20 units of rat meat. And there's also some light leather on the ground as well that we could use from clothing making. And Fob, if we didn't have, if the hopper was full, or if we didn't have it, would have carried it to our stockpile. But because the hopper is here, Fob's gonna put it in the hopper. And now our people are gonna be able to use the nutrient paste dispenser. And they will use the nutrient paste dispenser before survival meals. Survival meals, are at the bottom. Oh, we did have some more meals over here that haven't been brought in. Um, survival meals are the last thing that your people will eat, not because they don't like them, but because they last forever. Um, they are prioritized the least because, you know, you should eat everything that will perish first. Now, even though this rat meat is indoors, it will still spoil. So, so most things will decay if they're outdoors. Right? The survival meal is decaying because it's outdoors, just like the medicine, just like the pants were. They were decaying because they're out of doors. However, they don't rot because they're not raw food. Almost all food stuff other than survival meals do rot if they're not refrigerated or frozen. Things that are refrigerated, i.e. kept cool, but still above freezing, will last a lot longer. Things that are frozen will last forever. What we want to do, because this is going to go away in two days. Now, in practice, someone's probably going to use the nutrient paste dispenser before that happens. So maybe we don't worry about it. But eventually, we're going to have more food that we're just going to fill these hoppers with. And we might have more food than we're going to eat in a day or two. And then things will start to rot, which would be very bad. So we're going to make a freezer. Now, it so happens, and I didn't know this for a long time, that the nutrient paste dispenser here, all of the squares in this count as a wall. So if we go... If we go and do this, one wall and one door over here, this whole area here will count as its own room. Which, what's great about that is then we can go into temperature and build a cooler and refrigerate this room. So I'm going to click here. Oh, do we not need the replace mod anymore? I guess not for something like this. If I build a cooler here, we can have this whole room refrigerated. Or in fact, refrigerated so much that it's a freezer. In which case, nothing in here will ever deteriorate. So all of our food that's in the hoppers won't do that. Oh, you can see this is out of power. Why? There's no wind. There's a little meter here that will fill up, the little yellow bar that will fill up the windier it gets. Right now, there's not enough wind to power both the light and the nutrient paste dispenser. So the nutrient paste dispenser is unfortunately out, which means people are eating survival meals. That's kind of annoying. Kind of won't get to show that off. It'll get windier soon. Something we can do is we can get batteries so that when it's really windy, we can charge up some batteries. And then when it's not windy, they will use the batteries instead. So this is a whole room. There's actually a button over here. Room stats display. <coughs> oh, is this not? Oh, yeah, it is. I don't know why it's not highlighting this room because it's clearly highlighting this as a separate room from over there. Oh, it's because this is not enclosed because the... Um, the freezer. Hold on. Let's just wait for the freezer to finish. Or the, the cooler. There you go. Now, this is an enclosed room. You can you can see. This is a, a small enclosed room. You see the little blue highlight. 
it's definitely enclosed, which means it's going to be temperature controlled. So what I'm going to do is turn off that. This is going to need power. Oh, no, when you put down the cooler, it has a hot side and a cold side. So we need to make sure the cold side was blowing in. Uh, it is pretty easy to make the mistake of putting it the wrong way around. Not that I've ever done that. But eventually there'll be power and this cooler will try to keep this room cool. Now, by default, it's set to 21 degrees Celsius. So if it's hotter than 21 indoors, the cooler will run. If it's not, it won't run. We want it to be colder than that, so it's at least refrigerated. So let's say I do this. So now our target is one degree C. This will be a nice refrigerator, but still not frozen. I'm gonna hit it again, bring it down to minus nine. As long as it's below zero, this, this room is gonna be a freezer. Everything in it will be frozen and will never rot. That's great. We just have to wait for the wind to start blowing again. Freaking wind. We got a little bit more than before. Enough for the nutrient paste dispenser to be working. But yeah. Now, I think our puppers will also prioritize eating the raw meat over our survival meals now. So at least that's good. Oh, there we go. Now there's enough wind. See the yellow bar filled up a little bit more. This cooler is now working. And if we check the room, it's minus six, minus nine now. It'll fluctuate a little bit because you lose some heat through the walls. Also, every time someone goes through this door, a little bit more heat will leak through. But now we've got ourselves a freezer. Now, what we'll probably want is more than one hopper. I'm going to put a bunch over here. So we'll have a bunch more hoppers. But what I'll also do is I'm going to create another stockpile zone in here that's on the ground. And I'm going to change the rules. I'm going to clear everything. I'm going to say all food. Because right now, if we have any meals or chocolate or something like that, it won't get stored in the hoppers. Now, pemmican is preserved meat. It does eventually decay, but it's very slow. I don't think it needs to be in the freezer. Hay technically also decays if it's not frozen, but it takes forever. And kibble is very stable, so it doesn't need to be frozen either. I don't think chocolate really needs to as well. So let's do that as well. But any raw food and any meals will get stored in here. Now, we do want our raw food to be put in the hopper as a priority. The hopper's priority level is important. Uh, the stuff on the ground here, I'm going to say preferred. So food will get stored here before it gets stored in the generic stockpile. But things that can go in the hopper will still go in the hopper first. And I think that's going to be ideal. So we'll build a few more hoppers. That's going to be great. We need to fill these. Now, they are set up OK by default. We need to fill these with some more stuff. Now, once we do get our rice to come in, the rice will go in there. But I think it's time to start hunting, so let's do that. We do have hunting turned on with both Fob and Sky, who have guns. If I go, so if I, animals shows me the animals I own. These are my tamed animals. If I go to wildlife, these are all the wild animals that are running all over the map. Now, these have a variety of different specs going on. It's a big screen, there's a lot going on. What do you need to care about right now? Well, what you need to care about right now is perhaps this value here. This is the chance that a creature will attack when they are harmed. Now, the further away your pawn is, so a long range weapon, that reduces the chance of the counter attack. Also, I believe their actual animal's handling skill also affects that chance. Still, there's lots of things that we can hunt that shouldn't attack us. Alpacas, ibexes, wild boars, turkeys, these should all be safe to hunt. Um, we'll go, uh, we'll hunt these, these ibexes. So I'm gonna put all the hunting over here. And so now my pawns with the hunting should go out and shoot those. And then afterwards, these should get butchered because we have cooking enabled for everyone. Ah, we got a pop-up. After you've had your base for a little while, you get a chance to name your little place. So we need to name our faction and the town. Let's call it the Faction of Vanilla and Vanillatin. There we go. Not a very creative name, but it'll get the point across. Okay. I guess... It, ooh, loud little gunfire over here. I guess on some screens it might call us the Faction of Faction of Vanilla. I just realized, but you know, that's fine. There you go, these Ibexes are being hunted. Whoa! Now, there's one thing that can be a little bit dangerous if you have more than one person assigned to hunt. Sky almost shot Fob. It might be a good idea to only have one person hunt. Sky was our best shooter and has the longest range weapons. I'm gonna turn off hunting for Fob because Fob almost got shot and that would have been bad. There you go, but Fob is gonna bring this Currently, Fob is simply hauling this deer to the dumping stockpile, but very soon someone will go and do a um, a butchering job. Oh, a wanderer wants to join. An actor named Honey wants to join our colony. We don't know anything about them, but we're gonna go ahead and accept them. Hello, Honey. Welcome to the party. Are you injured? No, you're good. What's your bio? You're super immune, 
That's nice. If you get disease, you'll heal faster. Slowpoke is poor. I don't like it when my people move slower, but we'll deal with it. Honey is a night owl. So a night owl will be unhappy during the day, but be very happy at night. They've also got some pretty interesting skills over here that I quite like. This seems like a pretty good thing. So what we're going to do is we're first going to check the schedule. And so night owls, if we check here, it'll say they are unhappy if they're up from 11 to 1800 hours. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a schedule where honey, when it gets to 11, go to bed and stay there until 1800 hours. There we go. Sleep through the day. I like it. And then you'll be up during the night and be happy. And we're going to do the same thing I did for the others. You're a great doc. That's good to have two doctors. That's wonderful. You also got good social skills. So we'll turn it on. You do have animal handling skill. We're going to do this as a priority. This is going to be great for taming animals or if we need to like maintain a herd of animals and maybe like call them from time to time. You're also not a good cook. I'll do the same thing where I put the cooking onto the max. I don't care who butchers as long as someone does it. It's going to be okay. You do have passion for crafting. I think now Vort was also quite good at craft. Well, no, sorry. They only have a skill of five as it turns out. They're really good at researching. We really are going to want Vort doing research all the time. So we're going to make a couple of changes here. Vort, I don't think is going to end up doing any crafting. Maybe I'll leave it on a four. If there's literally nothing else to do, then sure, maybe you can craft something. But really, Honey is going to be our, our permanent crafter is the deal. I think I'll do the same thing over here. Honey is going to be on craft duty all the time because Honey can't really do anything else. Although they do have a growing a plant skill of five, which is better than Sky's plant skill of three. So I'm going to turn off Sky's planting and have Honey take that over for now. And that way Sky can focus on hunting, hauling. You know what? I guess mining. We'll put a mining of three. It'll be the same thing. Vort. We're going to want Vort to basically be researching all the time and then maybe some other things, which right now Vort can't research. We don't have a research desk, but long term, Vort's just going to do research all the time. Sky is going to be the primary miner. And when they're not, they're going to haul. Fob is going to construct. And when they're not, they're going to haul. And Honey is going to deal with plants for now. But this is really a part time job. We don't actually have to deal with the plants that often. Mostly Honey is going to be responsible for crafting. I hate that they also can't haul, but overall, not too bad. We will need another bed, though. For now, we'll just add the bed to the um, to our little barracks over here. That's going to have to be okay. Let's get a light in here. Um, yeah, that's going to be okay. And then we could even make this prettier. We could put down some little end tables and things. It'll add to like the comfort of these beds. Let's let's put a little bit of that in, and we can give them a dresser in here as well. There we go. They'll, they'll still just be a barracks. It still won't make them super happy, but it'll make them happier. We are going to have to get individual bedrooms soon, but maybe not quite yet. Anyway, with that, so theoretically, you know, we got a couple more bodies there. I'm surprised no one's doing the uh, the butchering. Well, you're currently partying. All right, we'll let them do the party, and then they should butcher these Ibexes. Sometimes in your, you might want to put the... We might want to do that. Actually, it's not a bad idea. On my stockpile zone in the freezer, I'm going to change this. I'm going to allow animal corpses to be put in the freezer as long as they're not rotten. So fresh animal corpses will be put in the freezer so they don't won't decay if we don't get around to butchering them rather than just putting them on the ground outside here. That's going to be wonderful. So we're going to go and put a cut in here. Next episode, we got to keep expanding and hopefully start researching. That would be quite nice. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.